let's talk about Hyperion by Dan Simmons. Uh, so this is released in 1989 and won the Hugo Award in 1990. It's the first in the four book series, the Hyperion Cantos. Technically it's part one of a duology or double novel with Hyperion Falls, book two. But it's fundamentally a different novel. Um, the basic, and that's significant because of the structure. The structure here is a Canterbury Tales format of there's seven pilgrims travelling to a strange planet, Hyperion, uh, which is just beyond the edge of the hegemony of man. So to be clear, this is sci-fi. Um, it's a galactic body run by humans. That's the hegemony of man. They have the help, um, tenuous or or reluctant perhaps, of an AI organisation or body called the Technocore. And uh, because Hyperion doesn't have basically a light speed jump point in Farcaster, uh, you have to manually travel there. You have to go there via kind of time dilated um, light speed and accruing time debt and the rest of it. Uh, stuff that obviously a few different authors at different times wonder about. Uh, Joe Haldeman famously in Forever War think about the same idea uh, in a different way. But anyway, the point is the pilgrimage that they're going to this planet, Hyperion. And Hyperion is itself a planet with weird mind warping, uh, sorry, time warping artifacts, uh, the time tombs, that relate to a strange being called the Shrike, who is this, uh, well, you can see the helmet of the Shrike there, or the head, a metal spiked thing from the far future who some people worship in a sort of apocalypse cult. Um, and the people going on this pilgrimage are not uh, are not members of that apocalypse cult. They're going for all kinds of different reasons. And this is one of the best sci-fi novels ever. Uh, this, it, I think, undeniably, and lots of people will agree, of course, this isn't a new opinion. Um, and it, most people would say it's Dan Simmons' best book as well. So there are six... So first, range and variety of the tales and characters. That's a big advantage. There are six tales plus framing sections. They're all very different uh, in, in two ways. They're very different. One, they're each a different subgenre. Uh, for instance, one, the soldier's tale, is a, um, a, a military sci-fi, for instance. One, uh, the detective's tale, is um, hardboard noir. One, uh, the priest's tale, is this sort of discovery and exploration sort of thing with growing... Um, uh, you know, we're in a sort of dark, dark continent style exploration thing with the growing horror of realization about the strangeness of the things, so also touching on Lovecraft. And uh, I think that's something which, a big thing in the Canterbury Tales genre, if you like, so starting with Boccaccio, particularly the Decameron, which Chaucer drew from for his Canterbury Tales, Canterbury Tales themselves, and examples of, of other copies like. Uh, the Tales from a Wayside Inn by Longfellow. A big idea is that your different authors, your different authors of the tales, who are, uh, are sub-creators, I suppose, have different voices. In the Canterbury Tales, the Knight's Tale is a tale of uh, daring do and nobility, and the verse and the story reflect that. The Miller's Tale is a city tale, very bawdy um, and crass, and the verse and the story itself reflect the Miller's character and interests as well as the particular nature of the story. So that's the point here. The subgenres are really interesting and well executed uh, and they also communicate the character involved as I say in terms of the genre, in terms of the events, the style, even the denouement and purpose of the story because each of these six stories reveals more about the Shrike and why they're going to Hyperion and so there's a gradual unveiling, it all comes together, you know there's a really good crossover of the subgenre of the individual uh, pilgrim tale and the character involved um, and the way that works into the plot as a whole. And my favourite is the scholar's tale for what it's worth and I think um, you know I'd be interested to hear what people's favourite tale is if they've read them. Secondly world building. One thing that this format helps is world building. Uh, different aspects are built up in different ways the, uh, the priest tale builds up the idea of the frontier, the variety of human civilization, the strangeness of what is beyond, the weirdness of alien elements in, um, in a sci-fi context. The detective's tale shows us some of the tech side of the world, the urban parts of the hegemony. Um, so there's a kind of tiny bit of neuromancer in there as well. 
and it all works really well. The world feels real and compelling, which makes the high sci-fi concepts and events more plausible and important. Um, it doesn't all feel uh, sort of his some ideas thrown at the wall. It's very organic, and the way the the book is structured helps that. And finally, the plot works. It isn't the least important leg of the stool. It matters, and it works. And all the different funky elements, uh, the different genres and characters and formats and things that happen. They all work together in the denouement of the story. Without the conceit of the particular Canterbury Tales format, uh, the plot, basically the plot that is slowly revealed and resolves couldn't have happened without the format. So the format is not a gimmick, it is integrated. And it works really well. So I recommend it, uh, which isn't a surprising result. Uh, I wouldn't say there's anything I'd add that's bad about it. Um, I would recommend the rest of the series to different degrees. If you like the first one, you'll like the second one. Hyperion Falls is very good. Uh, and the Endymion stuff later on, which people tend to like less, is probably underrated by contrast. Uh, people get pretty annoyed at it when actually it's, it's decent. It's fine. It's not amazing. Uh, but I really like Hyperion. Um, I don't know if you've read it. If you liked it, tell me in the comments. What was your favourite story? Tell me in the comments. And uh, maybe as a separate kind of trivia question, uh, can you think of any other Canterbury Tales formats that I have missed or I don't know about? Anyway, till next time.